seven factors pushing car prices, and things you can do to combat them. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of Super High Intensity Training for Car Buyers. The amazing Elizabeth is here today, and we're going to be talking about the seven factors pushing car prices and how consumers influence them. As our loyal followers know, the Homework Guy channel focuses on preparing car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. Well, today we're going to discuss these seven factors besides the microchip challenge. These seven things are impacting car prices and you can help to control them. If you're new here, you have a lot of catching up to do. There are tons of videos on our channel covering car buying strategies and everything you need to know from paying for a car with cash to avoiding becoming a victim of fraud at a car dealership. Show us how smart you are and subscribe now and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. The Homework Guy is the best show and the best car buying advice you can find online. Last year in April, inflation was sitting at 2.6%. Well, that's fairly typical. Over the last 10 years, while inflation has been up and down 1.3% to around 3%, the mid 2% range is very common. What isn't common is where inflation is at this year. In April, the same month from a year ago, inflation was at 4.2% across the board. Prices of everything have looked fatter, and indeed they are. Those of us who monitor the car business looked on in disgust as used car prices beat the rate of overall inflation by five times, wow. posting a 21% inflationary increase. To be clear, that was used cars at 21%. Meanwhile, costs of new cars arriving at the dealerships were just up 2%. Hmm. Now, I'm not saying new cars didn't see the same bump as used cars in actual selling price. Remember all those well over MSRP prices? Well, quite often the new car prices were even worse. Dealers saw an opportunity and gouged their customers as much as they possibly could. And customer service, which had already been very bad, actually got worse as more bad attitudes combined with an unfriendly atmosphere for consumers. So whenever the car market shifts to a seller's market, the bad operators go from bad to worse. <laughs> That's right. They quite often think of a sale as a one-off opportunity to take advantage of a customer and take advantage, oh baby, yes, they do exactly that. Well, let's jump into the seven factors, besides the microchip shortage that drive the car prices. Interestingly, you, the consumer, unwittingly push many of these factors. Yes, you do. And it's in your power to stop the upward momentum by waiting and saving your money. So factor number one, older automobiles on the road. For seven straight years, the age of cars on the road have been getting older. For example, in 2014, the average vehicle age on the road was 11.4 years. Now that seems like a lot, but by 2020, it was at 11.9 years, and right now, it's 12.1 years. That may seem like a lot to many of you, but one of my most reliable vehicles is a 14-year-old Ford F-150 in terrific condition, and it will still be serving me 10 years from now. The trick is buying a vehicle that will last and then taking good care of it. As we've shared before, many of us here on the Homework Guy team buy used cars, but we don't waste money on new cars because we understand the value of the dollar. How do older vehicles push car prices? Well, many of you don't understand the value of keeping a vehicle longer like I do, like Liz and several else here at the Homework Guy team. So as your vehicles age, it also creates a large volume of car buyers who think they are ready to head to the dealership even when they're not. And even during a seller's market, like right now, and those of you who are doing that because you think your car is getting too old, you're helping keep prices higher than they should be. Instead of replacing your aging vehicle, consider fixing it and driving it just a little longer. You're well beyond those rapid years of depreciation, and cars are almost always cheaper to fix and maintain than they are to replace. And by doing so, you're helping to fix that overbloated car market. Exactly. Factor number two, tax cuts. Reduced federal taxes passed by Congress in 2017 took effect in 2018. Most American taxpayers benefited from it. H&R Block estimated the average tax savings per person was $1,200. Well, consumers are exactly what the title suggests. They're consumers, put more money in their pockets, and they'll spend more money. Americans willing to spend more money on cars has had an effect on car prices. You did it to yourself. Well, don't be in such a rush to spend the few extra dollars you have in your pocket. Save your money. And if you're paying attention to anything in these markets these days, there's going to come a time where you're going to wish you had saved some of that money. So start now. Don't spend your tax savings on a new car. Save the money and you'll never regret it. Factor number three, stock market effect. After experiencing some steep declines in the early days of the pandemic, all major U.S. stock markets made nice rebounds. What does this have to do with car prices? Well, there's increasing consumer confidence in America and that the country is restoring its wealth, or there's the impression of it at least. 
Whether that news is true or not, it boosts consumer confidence. And that always has an impact on both new and used vehicle prices, like it or not. So again, use of discipline. Don't let a stock market report lead you to believe that you should start spending your money. Factor number four, federal unemployment subsidies. While half of the states have already turned down any further unemployment compensation from the federal government, there are still a lot of people getting a $300 a week unemployment subsidy. The current subsidy is set to expire at the end of September, so there's a little heads up for you guys. People who shouldn't be affording cars are able, in part, to buy them because of this subsidy money. And this is just the old, more money in the pocket means more money that gets spent. So don't be that kind of consumer. That money is going to disappear quickly like a puff of smoke. Or like a fart in the wind. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't bet anything on unemployment subsidies from the government, and I certainly wouldn't be putting myself into a long-term car debt on such shaky financial grounds. Factor number five, growth in GDP. After the economy tanked in the first half of 2020, the second half boasted one of the best comeback stories in the third and fourth quarters, with the economy growing 33% in the third quarter and 4.3% in the fourth quarter. By the end of the year, the U.S. economy was one of the tops in the world. Does that surprise you? No. This year, we posted 6.4% in the first quarter and approximately 10% in the second quarter, all of which, unfortunately, has an influence on raw materials and product prices. And out of the 21 million people who lost their jobs during the pandemic, well, 13 million of you are back to work. So economic news always has an impact on car prices too. Cars fit in a category of consumable goods that tend to be significant influencers on the prices of other goods. And they are quick to go up the moment it seems the economy will sustain these higher prices. Factor number six, wage growth. On the heels of the recovering economy, Average wages in the U.S. increased 4.4%. That is, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This goes back to more dollars in the pockets of consumers means more people spending money on things like new and used cars. We're sounding like a broken record here, are we? (laughs) It just keeps coming up over and over. If only people had a clue how important it was to save money and not to sink the few extra bucks they have into rapidly depreciating purchases like cars. Yeah, we are sounding like a broken record. (laughs) It needs to be said, and maybe if we said it enough... People will pay attention, Liz. How about that? (laughs) Factor number seven, overall federal spending. The stunning willingness of our government to spend multiple trillions of dollars in print money like it's toilet paper. Ew. Well, that has served to fuel the inflation factors and increase prices more significantly than anything else we've mentioned on the list. If you haven't noticed, our government has been figuring out more ways to make your hard-earned dollars get closer to being worthless. Pretty sad, but it's a straight-up factual comment. Now, if any of you in our viewing audience decide that this gives you license to blow up our comment section with a bunch of political arguments, well, you'd be wrong. The comments will be deleted. It's simple economics and a long known fact that you can't simply print money you don't have, money that rests on nothing of value, and then expect that bad things won't happen. Any other view is simply wishful or very naive thinking. We've been saying today that consumers need to place a greater value on saving money and sitting out of this bloated car market. Exactly. Take some of this to heart, guys, and make better financial decisions in the future. All right. If you appreciate this candid commentary in our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up. And please, always remember to comment on our videos. Not only do you help others by commenting below, but the comments are one of the best ways to boost search algorithms that help others to find the videos too. Exactly. Remember to add hashtag the homework guy to your comment. If you're on other platforms, look for us out there. There's a list of options appearing on the screen now, and they're linked in the description box below. If you're new here, as we always remind you, make sure you check out all the other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people, and you might as well benefit from our great content too. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below. And thanks to everybody who does that. It's awesome. But no problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us out is exactly what Liz said. Share this video with family and friends so they can get just as lucky as you. Encourage everyone to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. You see, the entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer. And that's exactly what we do. Well, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter with The Amazing Elizabeth. We We gotta gotta go. go.